Good morning, everyone. It's great to come together for communion and to have this time to to really uh, remember Jesus. And that's a good thing to do, right? I thought I'd start with a uh, very familiar passage from Romans 8, 28. It says that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Now, I think we often recall this scripture whenever we are going through difficult uh, struggles in our life, and we should. It's very encouraging, and it's a true statement that God is, uh, is all about working for our good, for those who love him. And that, at least to me, and I think to you as well, is, is a great source of encouragement. Jesus was not absent from difficulties in his life. It seems like every other day presented a new challenge or a new struggle. As his ministry and popularity grew, so did his uh, critics and uh, his enemies who sought his demise. Until near the end of his ministry, he shares with his disciples his eventual outcome in the following passage in John chapter 16, starting with verse 1. He says this, Jesus says this, All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because They have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. We could do a a sermon on this passage alone, and uh, no, Gary, I won't do that uh, and cringe on on your time, but... It's interesting to see that they had nothing to say. Usually Peter always had something to say. But even in this case, he was silent because they were very upset because Jesus was leaving them. And many of you in the military have shared about being deployed and leaving family and how difficult that is and the struggle that it is, not just for you, but for the family you leave behind. And You can probably relate more than most to how maybe these disciples were feeling, the fact that Jesus was going to leave them. But Jesus said that, very truly, I tell you, it's for your good that I'm going. Not only is Jesus enduring the most difficult struggle for our good, he also provides us an example of how to have great faith in our own struggles. Yes, I mean, I know that some can make an argument that Jesus really didn't require faith. I mean, my goodness, he, you know, he uh, was around when the uh, world was created. In fact, the world was created through him. The universe was created through him. He, uh, came from heaven, so he's seen heaven. And while in heaven, obviously, he has seen and lived with God. And our definition of faith is uh, being the assurance of things we have not seen. Jesus has seen all those things. So you say, why, why would Jesus, or did Jesus, require faith? Well, Jesus is about to enter into events in his life that he has never seen before. He has never been forsaken by his father. He's never experienced death. 
Never been raised from the dead. He instead has placed his faith in his father that somehow God would restore his life. Something he'd never seen, experienced before. And in that process provide a way also for us to be restored as well. Forever. Pretty exciting news. Praise be to God for his most incredible gift, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So Jesus asked us to participate in this communion in remembrance of him, as often as we will, to remember him. And I hope as we take these emblems today, the bread, the wine, represent the body, the blood of Jesus. I hope we will remember and be encouraged in our faith. That our faith will be strengthened as you remember the faith that Jesus demonstrated in the most difficult circumstance. And it's tough when things are difficult to to think that this is working out for the good. That this can really be a good situation. Jesus just showed us that. He was going to go to his death, and yet he said, this is for your... He should have been the one grieving, not the disciples. Instead, he says, it's for your good that I do this. I hope you remember that as we will, if, as we are, some of you, and have gone through difficult times and will go through difficult times, remember that. I hope you re- remind me, as I go through difficult times, that Jesus and God says... In all things, God works together for good for those who love him. And certainly in this case, as we remember Jesus and particularly his sacrifice, it did work out for the good for all of us. Let us pray at this time. Our Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his incredible faith. Thank you that he He had us in mind and our good and our benefit as he performed this great sacrifice on our behalf. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we also thank you for these these emblems that give us pause to remember about what was given to us through Jesus. And God, what a great, great day, great time to reflect on something that gives us tremendous hope for our lives and tremendous confidence because you paid the price for us. You've given us the wonderful gift of forgiveness And you've redeemed us because you love us, because you want us to be with you forever. And and I pray, Father, that we we have that, a similar love, Father. We have a desire to be with you. That there's really, we boil it all down, there's nothing else more to treasure than to be able to be with you, to have a relationship with you, to walk with you, to see you, to talk with you. And on that day when we're reunited with you, forever and ever. Thank you for these emblems. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. We want to offer thanks also for the uh, contribution that we're about to give, and uh, as has already been mentioned about the, the children's ministry with the uh, goats in India and the way that they have been 
provided by not just this church, but I think there's several others involved with that. And it really puts things in perspective when you look at people that are they're rejoicing over getting a goat and how that provides their livelihood. And it's so different than how I view uh, what will survive, you know, provide for me and how maybe you do and what, what would make you complete or content. And it was interesting the other day, uh, I know Marie and I have some people that help us with financial planning and they sent a, a little, uh, I guess a, a weekly notice and the whole topic of the, the little uh, letter they sent via email was all about being content with what you have. I look at that and uh, I say, these, that's, tremendous, that's a great joy. These, these women, any, they, they can, can be content with a goat. And, you know, we traveled to uh, uh, Guatemala one time and saw people content with, a, with this a dirt floor and a couple of pieces of tin to live in. And anyway, I guess what I'm saying is that we've been blessed tremendously. We have no reason to be uncontent with what we've been given. And we're thankful that we have the opportunity to give and to, particularly with these, uh, the ministry in India. So let's pray at this time as we give. Thank you, Father, for this uh, great blessing you give us in being allowed to be in your kingdom, Father. Pray that you bless the, the offerings that are given to help people in their times of need, also to advance your kingdom and to be able to Help us seek and to save the lost. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.